David was the coastal zone manager for the Cordova Alaska, Alaska district for five years and now is the planning and projects manager for the city of Port Aransas and oversees the coastal management plan for the city. That's something that's been left out so far is every one of these coastal entities, counties and cities, has to submit to the general land office their beach management plan. And that included in that beach management plan is how that entity manages the beach. And I'm, I don't know where, who who's actually says, hey, you're not managing it like you said you were. I guess that's between GLO and the entities, but David may explain some of that. David? Was he's hot or? No, one of them is from the TV. Okay. All right, sargasm maintenance in Port Aransas. Okay, what we're doing up in Port A. Uh, just to give you a quick overview, uh, here's an aerial of Mustang Island, courtesy of Dr. Watson. Uh, city of Port Aransas, located on the northeast end of Mustang Island. We have approximately eight miles of beaches in Port Aransas that we maintain. The first mile right here from the south jetty, uh, just past the Horace Caldwell Pier, is, is the county park uh, maintained by uh, Blake and his crew. St. Joe's Island here and the North Jetty. Beach stakeholders, locals, visitors, businesses, the ecosystem, future generations. And I'm not sure, but I think my daughter's in Section 10 violation right there if she turns that shovel full of dirt over. So I'm going to stop bringing shovels to the beach. Sargasm maintenance history. I'm going to kind of start off in about 1980 because that's when we started our kind of our modern present day uh, beach maintenance practices. Uh, 1980, we, had, uh, we entered the post Hurricane Allen dune building mode and we were using sargasm and sand collected uh, via front stacking to rebuild the dune uh, complex. Well, just to let some of you might not know what front stacking is, front stacking is is when you mechanically collect your sargasm and sand and you stack it on the front of the dune complex and this shows like maybe over several years uh, your yearly build outs so if you keep doing this without a storm event that eats into it uh, you're sh shrinking your beach width and that's what we're experiencing now in a lot of areas on Mustang Island here's a photo in town this is the 1971 line of vegetation, so this is post Celia. Uh, Celia was a hurricane that hit in the 70s. This is uh, Avenue G, the lighthouse edition, and here's the line of vegetation. And on the next photo, same, uh, same spot. Uh, the pink line is the 1971 line of vegetation that we just saw. The, light green line in the middle is the 1984 line of vegetation and the present day line of vegetation down here on the bottom so you're seeing this front stacking has built out of course that's uh, concurrent with some natural dune building also but we front stacked this area right here this is approximately about 80 to 100 feet sargasm maintenance history in the 90s, uh, after about 10 or 15 years of front stacking, some of the citizens started saying that, hey, the dunes are getting too high and we can't see the ocean. And the city began trucking the sargasm and sand to point south within our city limits to vacant properties. <laughs> because no one was watching them. So here's a, here's a 19... This is a 1984 aerial view of this is uh, Beach Access Road 1A the Aransas Princess has not been built yet and three years prior we just had Hurricane Allen so you see the 1984 uh, line of vegetation the red line was the 1979 line so you saw we saw about just in this area anywhere from let's say 50 to 100 feet average but I'm sure in some places it was more so this is pre-front stacking. Uh, here is post-front stacking. 
Same spot, Aransas Princess has been built. The green, the 1984 line. Here was the previous 79 line. And this is the 2005 line. Um, and this, air, this spot right here, 258 feet of front stacking. This, the purple lines, the faint purple lines, uh, right here is where the, we transition in property ownership. There is a wedge of, of state-owned general land office property, and they are the landowners, fee simple landowners of the beach area. But as we get south of Access Road 1A, these owners all own to the high tide line. So we've been front stacking on private property for 20 some years. Uh, this is right before this, this vacant spot of land here. This is where the Newport Golf Course is, is being built. So needless to say, uh, the Newport people aren't too happy that we front stack their property. And there might come a day when they tell us to move it. And so we're going to need to figure out where we're going to move it. They were proud of having a sea turtle nest on their property, as they put it. Oh, good. Last year. Good. So they claimed that that was their property where the seat has been there. All right. So that's post front stacking. And I think Dr. Watson showed an interesting photo of this, and I think I used it too. There it is right there. Um, this is that, that wedge. See the, the sargasm line kicks out right there. So this is where that 250 feet is uh, that we front stacked. And that's as of 2006. Golf course still is not under construction. Oh, I take that back. They're, they're digging in one of the lakes. right? No, that's Pioneer. Excuse me. Okay, our beach maintenance kind of came to a grinding halt in April of 07. That's not a baseball. That's supposed to be a beach ball. The, the, city, the city received a Section 10 violation, cease and desist order from the Corps, saying that we were discharging dredge or fill materials into waters of the U.S. So we had some policy changes with our, with our maintenance uh, that, that came out of this order. We had to cease the trenching of sargasm. That's where, where you take a front end lo or you take a, a motor grader, tilt, tilt the blade on its side and you cut a deep, a deep ditch and then you blade in the sargasm and blade some sand over it and you can do that right at the water's edge. So we had to stop trenching. Uh, we stop beach scraping. That's typically taking a motor grader and uh, altering your beach profile. Uh, typically what we used to do was we would, we would motor grade the beach, get it nice and flat, so then when the sargasm would wash up, the front end loader buckets could, could skim along a flat surface and pick up sargasm. So we had to uh, cease beach scraping and then basically cease the placement of material below the, the HTL, which is the core uh, boundary line that they govern. We were allowed to continue to use rakes and front end loaders, providing that the percentage of sand, they never did give us a percentage. They wouldn't go on record and say, uh, you can use front end loaders if they pick up, you know, minuscule amounts of sand. So we're still using the front end loaders. Another, uh, so June 2007, this was our last large scale front stacking event. And this was also on that same Newport property. That's the Aransas Princess in the background. Um, big policy change in 2007, city council voted to cease all front stacking and implement mid and rear stacking. And then also in June, uh, dune permit that allowed mid stacking and rear stacking in the dune complex. Uh, here's an uh, exhibit of mid and rear stacking. Basically you would collect your sargasm sand on the beach and the front end loader would uh, ramp up the four dune ridge. Sometimes you even you got to cut, cut a notch into it and you can place it. Uh, you try to target a swale or a depression and this would be a mid stack and then if you go all the way back to the, to the rear of the Fordham complex, we call that rear stacking. But for 2007, we only did uh, mid stacking. And, we, and in 2008, in April, we finally did a, a rear stacking. Here's the process of uh, what the city does to regulate it. The city staff identifies a notch or a drive over location. 
We try to keep the, uh, the notch to uh, not to exceed 10 feet, which is sufficient enough for a, a front end loader to get through. And then once again, you, uh, you place seaweed and sand required to access your disposal site. <coughs> Aesthetics goal, one of our goals when we do mid-stacking is we try, to, uh, we try to limit the visibility from the beach so that when you're on the beach and you look up into the dunes, um, it's not real prominent that you see big stacks of sand and sargasm. This is, you can barely, you can kind of see just some of the side spots where we did some of our mid-stacking. This is uh, one of our mid-stacking areas. This is looking north. This is from... Uh, look, there's the dunes right there. So this is right at Lantana County Park in the background. This is, after, this is one of our mid-stacking 2007 sites after 10 months. So we're seeing some good vegetation in here. Uh, the width of this is about, well, we probably did about 25 feet. Uh, goat's foot vine. Those are kind of the first ones because they send out the runners. So that's kind of the first vegetation we saw. Some seed purslane, some grasses, beet sunflowers are coming in. Uh, there's the white variety of flower, goat's foot vine. This is the, this is the ramp up that we used for mid stacking. And we backfilled it and it's starting to grow in too. This is a test pit that I dug. Just we, we try to monitor what the uh, what the state of the sargasm is that we're burying. And this is after 10 months, and this is about a four feet deep pit. And the sargasm breaks down relatively quickly into uh, organic vines, uh, pretty much all the way down the pit. I didn't hit any any you know sargasm that you could discernibly make out. That that's what it was, but it seems to provide a good soil for plants. This is our this is our first uh, attempt at rear stacking. This is at uh, mile marker 13, and this was from the sargasm event in March. The motor graders, the, or the, excuse me, the front end loaders can they can ramp up a pretty steep incline. So we try to keep this as, as high as we can. We kept this one at approximately nine feet. Here it is, looking from the back. This is the disposal site. We want to. One of our goals is to keep this width pretty narrow. We want to run parallel up and down the dunes because we think we'll get a better, better vegetation grow in. The bigger your area, you know, most of your plants are growing in from the sides. And I think Dr. Watson had mentioned that yesterday at, at, the, at the area of Tortuga development, that their area is so big that they're going to have a hard time growing that in. So we're trying to keep these uh, disposal sites long and narrow so that we can have good vegetation. This is looking back towards the ramp up. We're also, we're also staying off of the back side of the dune. We want to stay, you know, four or five feet down. We think that'll help with vegetation. Another big sargasm maintenance policy in, in June of 2000, City Council wanted to implement leaving small to medium sargasm events on the beach. And so instead of this, you have this kind of look here. And what we're finding is, what we're finding is that sand, most of the tourists will tolerate sargasm on the beach. It's when you have the big blanket, full coverage that, you know, City Hall starts getting a lot of calls. But primarily we've been, you know, like right now we have a pretty fair amount of sargasm on the beach. And we haven't, I don't think we've done really any beach maintenance since Sandfest. Um, so, and the calls are relatively low at City Hall, although the tourism season is coming up, so we'll see if that changes. Large event. This is something that we would target immediately for cleanup. Conclusions. Um, city feels that sargasm plays an important role in the beach dune environment and needs to stay within the beach dune system. Small to medium sargasm events left on the beach are tolerable to most beachgoers, and Sargasm maintenance will continue to evolve. We have, um, if you're not aware, the city is, is currently seeking a Corps of Engineers permit, and I think uh, along with Corpus and, and the county, that will definitely yeah, change once again um, city maintenance procedures. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, I think we're, 
several months to maybe half a year away from that coming uh, coming through. So, but but for now we'll continue our mid stacking and rear stacking and leaving what we can on the beach. Whoa. That's not me, but it is Texas. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, good, Dave. Any questions for David? I'm sure. Yes. Does uh, you, I don't get over there to Port A all that often, but um, last few times I've been there, it seems like you know you come out on the beach and you're actually on almost a paved road. It's mm -hmm. that slick. Are you all still doing that? Yeah, we, we still do uh, road maintenance on the beach, so you, you will s still see the motor graders on the beach. Uh, we've kind of have really we target from Lantana to Access Road 1A and as you go further south we we limit our maintenance in those areas so if you went from from let's say Access Road 1 and then south you're almost in a four-wheel drive condition and we have put up uh, to help us last year we put up a signage for driving conditions you know red bad green good so kind of our po staff policy is that we don't feel that a that a Hyundai needs to be able to access all eight miles and if you know so there's a harder beach up in the city common area and as you go south it's transitioning into a more Kia, Kia high rider or whatever yes no no although we probably could but we haven't Yes, Tony. Yeah, just, uh, I, I just drove from Access Road number one, Bentley, all the way from Port Anderson to uh, Access Road number two, and uh, you're almost in four wheel drive right now, so it's certainly not slip. Um, um, and that's all right for me. Right. I'm fine with that, but what I did notice, by the way, and I want to congratulate you on, is that they were hand picking trash um, along that section, and I think that's the way to go. And right. I wish all of the entities would do the same. Right, and that's, that's another thing I. I, I didn't really touch on was the hand picking that's one of our major operations we typically send out every morning we send out two trucks of hand pickers it's a two-man crew and they'll they'll cruise the beach either by foot with one guy following in the truck you know for trash pickup you know one thing is we, we found people will will tolerate the small amounts to medium amounts of sargasm if there's not trash in it but once the trash isn't getting picked out then the uh, the thing starts going off in their head that it's all trash, and you know then we start getting the calls at city hall. So th that's really key is getting that stuff hand picked. So we're trying to beef up our hand picking crews. Yes, Richard. Yeah, I, I want to congratulate you guys. It's so much better than what was going on. It's almost unbelievable. And I have one question, uh, and I brought this up before. Are you leaving some of the logs and driftwood and stuff on the beach, especially the the big logs and things? You, you know, I like them. Yeah, I, I know. I th I've, I've seen some of the logs stick around for a while, so I'm not sure if they're intentionally doing that or some of them are kind of barnacle encrusted. And, yeah, well, people yeah. still sit on yeah. them and take pictures of them, and kids like to play around. Yeah. So. It, yeah, I think they get burned probably before they get picked up by our crews. Well, I've seen some that would take quite a while. Yeah. yeah. No, that's true. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so where? Yes. Oh, that's uh, that's uh, Katrina, Hurricane Katrina at South Padre. Thank you. Yeah, if you go downtown to uh, Water Street, the Texas Surf Museum, they have a whole display of uh, <coughs> hurricane surf or storm surf in Texas. Nice bunch collection of nice photographs and maybe some videos too.